Hello, so welcome back to my next video. It's been a very long time since my last video uh, because I was actually preparing for this exam um, and I wanted to make this video to as a sort of summary, an introduction guide on what I did, what I found useful. Um, and I want to make this video in a way um, I felt the need to show explain the process that I went through because when I started off, um, I found it quite difficult to really find a bit of guidance on exactly what I needed to do, a bit of a study plan. Um, and now that I, I made it past it, I wanted to make the video in the hopes that it might help other people just starting out. So what is the GSSC um, exam? Well, if you found this video, you probably already have a pretty good idea of what it is. Um, but basically, it's a prerequisite exam for most applications for surgical specialties in Australia. Um, and it's a two and a half hour exam on two days, um, one after another um, the next day. It happens three times every year, um, one in February, one in June, and one in October. The day one is always anatomy, and the day two is a combination of pathology and physiology. The best place when you're starting out is make sure you thoroughly read the GSSE website about what it is, how to apply, know your dates that you're applying, um, know the fees that are involved, um, and the sections that you'd be covering as well. So fees, uh, depending if you're set trainee or most likely you're a junior doctor, um, it would cost $4,850 um, in Australian currency. I'm going to be taking, um, I'm not very sure about the New Zealand process. I assume it would be very similar, but um, because I'm, I've been working in Australia and I'm very familiar with the system, I'll stick to sort of what I know better. So you're gonna encounter different styles of questions whilst you're on the exam. So there's gonna be anatomy, pathology, and physiology, and there's gonna be spot exams, um, type X questions, type A and B, and type X again. Um, so spot exams is when they um, get pictures uh, from anatomy atlases or the cadaver images. It could be also be radiological, so like a CT scan or an X-ray point to various structures, looking for sort of name of what you're looking at, function, um, position, whether it's anterior or posterior, for that, those are some examples. Um, type X questions, we'll talk about them. Um, so I think it's really important to understand that, as you can see, there is a spread of scores between anatomy, pathology, and physiology. So. A lot of people think of the GSSE as an anatomy exam, but really it's it's anatomy, pathology, and physiology. And you also need a minimum um, cutoff point. Um, you have to score relatively well in all three sections to actually pass through the exam. So it's when you're studying for this exam, you should allocate sort of equal time to sort of all three sections. Um, and it's very difficult to cram or jam pack or let's say physiology for the exam. Another thing that's really important is to recognize that a third of the points in anatomy comes from spot exams. Um, and they come from a particular atlas, which um, we've found to occur year after year. And I'll point that out later in the slides. So it's really important to not miss out on the spot exam points. And just knowing doing multiple choice questions is not going to be enough to pass through the anatomy section. So let's look at some different types of question styles you encounter. All of these, you're gonna be more and more familiar um, because of um, the question bank that you're gonna be practicing through. So once you start doing more questions and questions, you're actually going to be more comfortable in doing these types of questions. Um, so one is example is true and false questions. This, this will have four points. Um, so you have to get four points correct um, to get the full marks. So for example, the esophagus um, received its motor innovation by the vagus nerves, and that's true. And all the other answers are false. So you're gonna put 
TFFF. Another example is going to be a multiple choice questions. That's very typical of most exam questions during medical school that you encounter. Just pick the most best or most appropriate answer for the question. And finally, you're going to find something like a statement, which is during exercise, there is an increase in alveolar PCO2 because, and the reason is, during exercise, venous blood PCO2 increases. And you're going to find the statement that will find which option is going to suit this the best. So during exercise, so this answer, the correct answer would be D, where the statement is going to be false, but the reason is going to be true. Now, each year, um, they're going to update what categories and how many multiple choice questions they're going to allocate to each section. As you can see, um, it varies um, from section to section. So if you're studying for anatomy, um, really grilling down on histology, development, and even central nervous system is not going to be the most highest yield for the exam. You would rather be really knowing your head and neck anatomy and your abdomen and the pelvis and even sort of um, thorax will be much higher yield for the exam. Similarly applies to sort of pathology and physiology as well. So you want to know your general pathology, immunology, infection, um, and neoplasia a lot better than things like statistics, where there's really only four multiple choice questions. That being said, when you are studying for statistics, know your basics very well because those four points could be quite easy to get. Um, physiology, again, cardiovascular and respiratory seems to be the highest yield when I found the gastro and urinary as well. And that's going to guide the amount of attention you're going to put into this while studying for it. So I'm... Um, when starting out, a lot of people just, there was two different approaches that you can go for. You can either go for, I'm going to study very well in depth. I'm going to know every single section. Well, it's going to take over a, more than six months at least, or even to a year of very hard preparation to know each section well. And in most cases, a lot of these knowledge will sort of slip past as the months go by, and it's going to be very difficult to regain it. A more popular approach and the one that I took was just um, focusing more on question make uh, and doing questions. And while you're doing the number of questions, you're encountering so many questions that you're invariably going to cover a large proportion of, let's say, abdomen anatomy by just doing a lot of questions. Um And it's a most, I, I found it was more an efficient and more effective way to study and I'll show you a bit about, this is, of course, not a guideline. This is not a strict method, but it's something that's worked well for me and possibly could work for other people as well. So it really depends on study types as well. Minimum of 10 weeks um, plus two weeks of revision was the bare minimum. I actually opted to take a lot more. Um, I started about six months just to, prior to the exam. So then instead of one week, I would dedicate a little bit more, maybe perhaps two weeks. Um, and another useful way of following this routine, I also found that maybe after every third week or every second to third week, I'll take a week break just in case if you, let's say work got a lot of a bit busy or something has popped up during that time, you will have some sections that you wouldn't have covered it as much depth as you wanted to, or you might even have missed that section. So that week gives me time to catch up and also revise as well. Um, so, But this is just the bare minimum time frame standard. So week one, um, a lot of people I found like to group things together. So if they were doing abdomen, they would like to do GIT pathology and GIT physiology. But I sort of rearranged it because I knew that GIT physiology was a lot more content than renal physiology. So I tried to group, if there was a very busy anatomy topic, I would group it with a slightly less busy or less busy physiology or pathology unit so that your week 
can remain somewhat stable. Um, but I'd like to still keep it within a very similar framework. So if I'm doing abdomen anatomy, I'd rather be doing renal physiology rather than sort of CNS physiology. You know what I mean? And also I'm trying to use this exam breakdown to guide how much attention I'm putting into each of these sections as well. Um, and I use these topics, all of these breakdowns to guide my week to week basis is how I sort of constructed this timetable. And you can apply that to your timetable. You can use, you can use the number of time you have leading up to the exam, some important events that you might have to attend um, and sort of frame your timetable based on that. So, and I kept going with week five, week six, week seven. Of course, I'm all, I'm, when I was doing it, I put sort of one week break every second to third week. And after that complete 10 weeks, I gave myself at least sort of two weeks before the exam. That two weeks, I'm not learning anything new at that point. I'm going through each sort of section and literally hitting questions one after another. Um, and that was the best way to sort of prepare myself. And it, it was a good way to refresh. I found that I had to go through the question um, bank of questions about three times for myself to feel quite confident leading up to the exam. Now, in terms of resources, so let's example in week one, when I was doing abdomen and embryology, what was I doing for that section? So first of all, I would start my week off by doing the number of questions. So I'll start off by question number one, answering question number two, answering, and I kept going. When I found that there was a particular section which I was struggling with, I would use last anatomy, which is what the exam was based on, and read that particular section or that topic to sort of understand a lot more. There's also an incident anatomy book, which I found that if the last anatomy was still quite difficult to encapsulate or understand, I would open instant anatomy, which was a sort of nice drawing with very simplistic way to sort of understand images um, and see what they were sort of talking about. I found that most of the diagrams from instant anatomy could explain a lot of the questions that I encountered. Um, another thing for anatomy, so remember that 30% a third is spot, spot exams. I found that I dedicated two days during the week or three days during the week, just reading the chapter of, let's say, abdomen, front to back, looking at every single images. I would try to cover um, the, the answer key and find out what the arrow is pointing to and what that structure was. And I'll check it with each one. And then finally, there's some external websites. There are a lot of different websites that offer sort of MCQ banks. Um, so different practice banks of questions. Uh, I found that that was a good way to sort of, for me, I did buy them. Um, I wouldn't encourage everyone to it really, you have to assess that for yourself and look through the website, but I found it provided me with some extra questions that I didn't encounter before. And um, again, you're just exposing yourself to more questions that way. Now for pathology, I really only used some Robbins um, is a, a very great textbook. However, it's very thick, very dense. With a lot of us working while studying for this exam, it can be a bit impractical to sort of read through multiple sections for the exam. There's something called a pocket companion. It's a much more summarized version. I found for myself that that was enough, but some people did find that they needed to do that Robin's actual textbook for some of the sections. But for me, what I did was each section that I encountered in pathology, for example, inflammation, infection, antibiotics. I'm, again, for every single topic that I'm listing here, I did the bank, like the, the questions that are relevant to that chap, to that section. But then to supplement that as well, I read through the important chapters. Um, in this pocket companion and the pocket companion is not very dense. It's a lot thinner and smaller um, and it could easily look through. So let's, for example, inflammation section, you could probably read it through um, 
within a day that you were even working at. So after work, reading through that section, and you'd finish that section off. And then for physiology, again, each of these sections, you're going through the questions. The questions are going to be you're exposing yourself to all the different types of concepts. So that's very important to not miss the questions. But when you're supplementing yourself by different resources, and for me, the three big one was there's West Risk Physiology. I did not read West Physiology front to back at all. I only looked through any relevant sort of chap not even chapters sometimes paragraphs and so sometimes chapters that were relevant to some of the questions that I found myself frequently getting wrong or not understanding now I will admit since I had a lot of time I had six months before the exam um, when I encountered let's say something like respiratory physiology or cardiovascular physiology or even gastroenterology I would read through my section of Ganon's medical physiology. So it was a quite a number of pages, but it really helped me visualize. For me, I didn't find that taking notes while reading uh, any of these supplementary resources helped me because it's a lot of time. It doesn't actually gain too much. but And I found that you're already going to remember it by re-encountering that question again. So you're going to read through that chapter understand it you're going to do some questions you're going to encounter the questions get them right and you're already putting it into your mind but if some people if no working has been the way of your study before i'd just say to continue doing what's worked for you in the past and then there is a series of lectures that um, um Do dr west has pr provided on youtube that's freely available highly recommend watching all of that I think what's very important is if you are working with a bit more of a tighter time frame, it's very important to not be so focused on finishing everything for that week. And so, for example, some weeks I was busy at work. I was not able to, let's say, finish all of my spot anatomy for upper anatomy. So I was remember for Rollins, I literally read Rollins front to back of each of the sections I was doing. So by the end of actually my study period, I've actually seen pretty much all the images of Rowan. It's very important, this. Um, but some weeks for upper anatomy, I was just not able to finish it. So I once that week finishes, or once, how depends, sometimes you might dedicate one week to this. And again, if you have more time, you would dedicate two or three weeks. But once that time frame has finished it's time to move on and it's very important to keep moving on and to keep progressing because there's just so much content you don't want to be so hyper focused into one section and just missing out on all the other sections that was a mistake that i sort of started off with as well where i was spending three even three plus weeks on just abdomen anatomy and i have to say hold on there is a lot more sections um, that i need to cover so I think that is all the tips um, that I wanted to talk through about. There's also one more very important thing. Um, there's um, Professor Julie Mundy, who is a cardiothoracic surgeon that is based in Britain, in Queensland, um, who offers um, a time to create practice exam papers where you can send an email to express your interest and She'll add you to a mailing list. And there's two exams, one before paying, paying the exam and one that is sort of two weeks and leading up to the exam that she will discuss that you will get written sort of feedback into how well you're tracking for the exam, where you lie in comparison to other people um, and where the chances of actually passing the exam as well. And there's a good guide on how you're tracking. Highly recommend that as well. Um, she does this out of her own time, so it's amazing that um, to have that resource available. So again, I think that's all that I want to cover. I'm sure there's plenty of questions, um, so just comment down, comment down below. Overall, I think as long as you have a structure, you stick to it, and um, you dedicate. When when people ask me how much time in a day that I actually put into 
um, this exam study, I would say probably four months leading up to the exam, um, I was putting after work pretty much every moment that I could try to get, I was putting it to every off day, every weekend, I was putting it towards studying for this exam. And I think that's a good way to know that you're not leaving anything um, behind and you're really putting maximum towards it. It really prepares you with the best chance. And of course, some people have passed through with less or more effort. Um, so it really depends, varies person to person, but that's just what I've done. Um, and also talking about using every single opportunity Again, like if you are on hospital doing ward call, the shift is a bit quieter, you can pull up some questions and start practicing questions. Um, if you're driving home from work and your work is sort of 30 minutes a drive, which, which was for me, I would put on, there's an instant anatomy podcast um, that you can purchase. It's a UK-based um, product. Um that provides you a wide range of sort of anatomy topics. I'd click a podcast, put it on Bluetooth and just listen on it as like a radio on the way to work or to work. Sometimes on some days you might not even absorb any of it. Some days you absorb all of it, but it's just putting it, making sure every opportunity you're trying to seize it and putting as much of it as you can towards it and Try because it is a very expensive exam. It's something that you want to try to limit having to resit um, multiple times because it's not just about money as well, but it's also the time because it requires such a long time to prepare for it. I'm sure that, that you have other plans that you wanted to do with that time in, in terms of research or even outside of work-related things. So I think that, that summarizes everything. Um, this yeah, feel free to comment down and I'll answer any questions um, and take care and hopefully I'll make more videos soon.